Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hi, Melanie Johnson back with Jen Foster. Hi, Jen. Hey, everyone. All right, we've got a good show. We always have a good show, by the way. So that's why you should subscribe to our show if you haven't done that already. Just a quick reminder to subscribe and also leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. We recently beat out Damon John's show on Shark Tank. So we're really pumped about that uh, because we bring you great things like this. Today, we are going to talk about how to be unstoppable, the unstoppable CEO. We have the owner of that company today, Steve Gordon, and he teaches you how to sell high ticket items without being annoying and how to follow up and streamline your system. So we wanna know about that. We know other people's sales are always that big thing. It's like, how do you keep that pipeline filled? How do you not have those roller coasters in your business? So we're gonna learn about that today and I'm super excited about that. And on top of it, he has three books. Yes, three. So we're gonna talk about those and he's gonna tell how he uses books because we know a lot of our clients, all of our clients are authors, about how to use your book as a marketing and advertising tool to get those clients. Steve, welcome. Thanks for coming today. Hey, thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Great. Well, tell us, Steve, how you got into this industry and a little bit about your background. Oh, well, let me give you the short version. Um, so I got into business um, out of college. I went to, I have a technical background. And so I went to work for an engineering consulting firm uh, down in South Florida and uh, was really fortunate that after being there for about four years, I got asked by the founder to take over for him as CEO and just uh, had a great opportunity for about a 10 year transition with him in that business and, and learned a ton. And uh, then decided that I really enjoyed the sales and marketing part of it more than the technical part. And so I started our current company and we've been working with professional service firm owners and helping them try and figure out how do you sell this thing that nobody wants to you know, buy. They don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm gonna go stand in line to hire an architect, you know, they'll do it for an iPhone, but they won't do it for an architect or an attorney or, you know, a financial advisor or somebody like that. So, um, you know, so we, you know, I've spent my entire career sort of trying to crack the code on how to do that. And so for the last almost 10 years now, um, I've been working with those businesses and helping them build marketing systems and books are a key part of that. Um, so that, uh, they can get clients and, and it's so just a tremendous amount of fun. So let's dive into the book thing, just because you know, that's our business. We work with so many authors. So tell us, what do you do? We're going to do a lot of diving into the other resources that he has too, but let's start off with the book. So if someone becomes an author, number one, they should become an author is what you're telling us. How do they use their book to gain uh, leads, revenue, and business? Well, there, there are lots of ways to use the book, okay? And, and as you guys know, um, our focus has been how to use it in a referral process to multiply the number of referrals that you get. I actually wrote a book on it, oddly enough, right? <laughs> so um, what we found is that when most businesses are trying to, to generate referrals, it's completely at, at random that it happens. Um, they, you know, the, the typical advice is just to ask a lot of people and then, you know, hope that they will connect you with one or two people and then follow up with those people for a really long time. And the problem with all of that is that <clears throat> the first interaction you have with that referred prospect, it's what we call a sales meeting. Now, ladies, I don't know about you, but I don't like going to sales meetings unless I'm the one doing the selling. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the prospect that's being referred doesn't necessarily wanna be there unless they have a really um, important and urgent need. And the client that you're mm -hmm. asking to make that referral probably isn't a professional salesperson, but you're asking them to go prospect and sell for you to get somebody into a meeting. We all know that's the most difficult thing in business. And so it's just a, you know, it's no wonder it doesn't work. And so what we discovered in 2012 was uh, after working with about 300 business owners on why they weren't getting referrals and what the block was, what we discovered was that there was just too, too much risk in the whole situation for, uh, you know, for the person making the referral. As I thought about how do we, you know, how do we alleviate that risk and still kind of make it happen, um, I looked at, 
the type of marketing that we were doing at the time, which is direct response marketing. And in direct response marketing, there's this idea called two-step lead generation where you send out a message to generate a lead. And then when the lead raises the hand, now you've got somebody that's sort of warmed up to work with. Well, if we take that idea and use it with, uh, with referrals, now we just need an information piece. And the book is, I think, the gold standard of, of information pieces to use in a referral process because I don't know about you, but I've never been offended when someone has shared a book with me. People send me books all the time. I love it. Even if it's not one that I'm, I'm super interested in, I'm probably going to keep it. I'm going to feel guilty if I throw it away. So it's going to go on the shelf. And now that author owns real estate in my world. And, um, and so there's no risk for the client when you approach them and, you know, and you tell them, and we coach our clients to have what we call the value conversation. And, and you go to them and you say, you know, Jen, Melanie, I'm on an absolute mission to transform the way that businesses get referrals. And I've, I'm so passionate about it. I've written this book and I would love to sit down with you and brainstorm 10 or 12 or 20 people that you think would benefit from getting a copy of. And I'd like to send it out to them as a gift from you. What do you say? Mm -hmm. And they always go, yeah, I'd love to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you know, they're your clients, they're your fans already. They want to help you, but most of the time we make it too hard. And so by removing all the risk and removing all the work, yeah. and a book is a great lever point to do that, then uh, you can unlock just a tremendous number of referrals. And so, yeah. so that's kind of in, in a really, I wrote a whole book on it, but in <laughs> less than five minutes, that's the process. <laughs> that's great. Well, and the thing about a book too, like you, like you were saying is, they're, they're happy to give it away or to, you know, give it as a gift for you, but they're going to read it. Or even if they even just read the back, they're going to know more about you. I mean, if it's a client, it's, a, it, they know about you, but if it's someone else, um, they don't really know a lot of times when I'm at networking meetings or, you know, people will say, Oh, I have this referral for you. And the referral that they refer to me is someone who does pretty much the same thing as me. It's not a good referral, but they thought of it because they don't really know what they don't really know what I'm looking right. for. Right. Or they didn't really listen to what, you know, I was asking my need. Right. But I think the book really does help them just by reading the back cover. They know exactly what you do, what your, your little bio and what the book's about. Absolutely. And I don't care if they read it or not. I mean, this is the yeah. thing that blows um, most people's minds when they, when they're considering, I'm sure you guys run into this all the time. You have somebody who has a message and they want people to read and consume the message. And so they get really focused on, well, how do I create a book that's really readable? And that's great. That's wonderful. But I don't really care if they ever crack the cover. And I'll tell you why. We had a client start with us uh, within the last six months who got a copy of, uh, of my Unstoppable Referrals book. And he said, I got it. And I put it on my nightstand and I had every intention of reading it. And it sat there for two and a half years. And I kept looking at it every day. And I finally just realized I was never going to read the book. And so I called you and that's why we're talking today. <laughs> and he became a client. There you go. So I don't care if they open it or not. It's still going to have an impact on them in their lives because it owns real estate. And, um, you know, I get questions all the time. Well, could we do it with an ebook? The problem with ebooks is that there's this folder. Everybody has it in their computer where ebooks go to yeah. die. And I'm, I'm a big believer in, in having something physical in somebody's world because it acts on them. You know, the, the yeah. physical environment around us acts on us and influences us. Um, and often when we don't even perceive it. Well, think about what you just said. I just love that. It's like it, the book was on his nightstand. Yeah. How many other businesses are on somebody's nightstand that they're seeing every single day? I mean, right. your bedroom is like your most intimate area of your house, right? That there, people, I would say, it's the only marketing tool that people take to bed with them, right? right. So, you know, they're yeah. like, oh, God, I, mean, I don't want to know what, hard. <laughs> I don't want to know what the book saw, but that's um, right. Yeah. It did its job. <laughs> and I also love that you said, so um, I just want to reiterate this so every, nobody misses what you said is that, okay, so you're asking for a referral, but you're just saying, I would like to give as a gift from you my book to 10 clients that you think would be a good fit for me. So it makes them look good, number one. So you're mailing it. This is from Sandy or John. Um, they asked me to send this book to you. I hope it's of great purpose. And if there's something of use, please contact me. So it's a win-win. All of a sudden, they look great. Like they're not, because sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like, 
oh man, I got to act like I'm selling you to sell them. And uh, you know, I don't really want to do that. But oh, you're going to give a gift from me? Hooray. So that's awesome. You say you have a tool that talks about how to follow up without feeling like you're following up and being annoying. What is that strategy? Well, so again, I wrote a book on that. And uh, <laughs> this is a, a bit of a different book. Um, we, uh, we offered a number of different versions. So there's a book where you can sort of learn the strategy and then some other packages where you can actually get templates that, that we use with our, our clients and in our own business to do that follow-up. But, um, but the, you know, the, the real secret to follow-up is changing your mindset around what it is to follow up. And I'll give you an example. So we were working with um, a professional who's in real estate several years ago, and he was getting leads from one of the big real estate websites. And the way that those leads work is they go to him and they go to about a thousand other realtors that are subscribing to that flow of leads, right? And so the race is on the minute it hits the inbox. Yeah. And his approach was to send what amounted to about a four page email. And it listed all of his qualifications. And I mean, he was probably one of the most highly decorated real estate professionals I've ever seen. He had all these credentials and all of these qualifications and great testimonials and all of this stuff. And he was sending that out. And the thinking was, the mindset was, well, I got to get it all out and in front of them right away. Mm -hmm. And that's a really selfish way of thinking about follow-up. Because the person who clicked the button on that website wasn't thinking, I really want to read four pages to evaluate a realtor. They were thinking, I really like this house and I want to go see it. Yeah. And so we changed the follow-up message. Instead of sending all of that, we said, well, all we really want to do is have a conversation with this person. We want to start that conversation over email. And so instead of sending them four pages, we're going to send them one question. Would you like to see the house? Really simple, really easy, okay? Very easy for them to answer and very easy for him to send. And so they re they're either gonna reply back yes, no, or they're not gonna reply, okay? Uh, most of the time they're gonna reply back yes, because that's, that was the intent they had, okay? Yes, great, when would you like to see it? You know, and, and question by question, we go through this follow-up process to get to the point that we're now on the telephone with them. Because after you go through a few volleys like that, it's pretty logical to say to someone, hey, okay, we're, we're kind of, we've gone back and forth here a little bit. It might be a little easier, and more, uh, more efficient if we just got on the phone. And that's ultimately what he wanted to do because he had a lot of success that way. And, and so in that little story is really what I think um, is the central secret to good follow-up. And that is thinking about what the other person is trying to accomplish in a given moment and then following up in kind in the simplest possible way to initiate a conversation. And I think most business owners take the approach that I just need to get it all out there. I need to make my whole full case right now to this complete and total stranger. Right. And then they're just throwing up all over him. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's just a more human way to, to do follow up. And so that's one form of follow up um, on the tactical level. And then, on, on kind of the broader level, following up with your entire database, we're big advocates of a podcast. You guys are doing a podcast. We've, we've, I have actually have two podcasts. We produce podcasts for our clients. And what I love about this medium is that for a normal business owner, not professional marketers like we are, but for a normal business owner who might not relish the idea of sitting down and writing you know, a newsletter or a blog post or anything like that, they already have all the skills they need to create really interesting content and have that sent out because they know how to have conversations. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't be in business if they couldn't hold a conversation for 20 or 30 minutes. And so they can really easily create great and interesting content by going and having conversations with prospects that they want to do business with, with referral partners that they want to build relationship with, with other business owners. Um, there's all sorts of people that they can have these conversations with it gets recorded and it can get sent out. And now you're, you're staying in touch, whether it's a monthly or every other week, or we advocate every week in an interesting way. That's not all about selling with all of the people that are in your database. And you're going to create relationship with them over time so that you're the, the sort of at hand professional when they're ready to do something. 
Yeah. I love the podcast medium. It's very easy to produce and very easy to have that conversation. Absolutely. I mean, we tell our clients, you want to be in a position where all you have to do is show up and talk. Yeah. You know, um, I made the mistake with our, my first podcast, which was in 2012, uh, which was the thing that actually launched the first book. And we can talk about that if you'd like, if we've got time. But um, I started that and, and foolishly thought that I was going to do the production on my own. Um, and that podcast did okay. It lasted for about a year. And then we got busy and I ran out of time. And so I decided I wouldn't start another one until I had a team. And that, that's my best advice to anybody that wants to do one. Get a team, whether it's an internal team, whether you outsource it to somebody, get a team. Yes. Yeah, we say that for books too. We always yes. say it too. It's like, you know, building a house. Either you can learn to be the tile later and the electrician and um, the plumber, or you can, uh, you know, ha be the general contractor and hire all those people and manage the whole project, or you can hire us and we're the general contractor. And at the end of the day, you just bring your furniture and move in. So. <laughs> yeah, right. That's your great. And, and make it successful. So um, I like that all of Absolutely. that, what you're saying about the follow-up and the different things. What other strategies do you have for people? Like when you walk into a business, what are you finding that they're not doing right that you can easily correct to um, make their revenue go up and, and close deals? Yeah, so we really break the, the entire selling process down into to three parts, okay? And if we start at, at the fun end of it where you collect the money, there's the sales conversation and then the the piece that we always advocate to have right before that is what we call a pre-selling presentation. And so this is a, a presentation that you can deliver in person, you can deliver in a webinar, you can have it on demand on your website, but essentially it's everything that uh, a prospect needs to know to educate them about the problem they face, the consequences of that problem, the solution you, you offer, and then gives them an opportunity to take the next step in your sales process, which for most of the people we work with is a one-on-one a -on -one call. Um, and so that's sort of the, the third column with, you know, the sales process. Um, the one where we usually begin is with follow-up actually, because most businesses are often, they're often doing okay with generating leads and they've built a network and they have some level of database and they're sitting on this sort of untapped gold mine because they're not communicating with it. And so we'll start by just re-engaging that group. And in combination with that pre-selling presentation, so we warm them up a little bit with maybe the beginnings of a podcast and then offer them the opportunity to go watch this presentation, which generally results in pretty quickly them having a lot more sales conversations. And, um, and so that's that second kind of middle piece is having a follow-up system that's really easy for you to execute so that as you're generating leads, you're not wasting that investment because it is an investment. It costs money, time, and energy to create a lead and it's the most expensive activity in your business. If, and if you don't know that, you, you really need to go look at those numbers. Um, and so then the, the third piece of this is sort of the, the, you know, the top of the funnel and we call that the attention ladder. And we always try and get our clients to visualize it as a ladder. There are rungs on the ladder that you're gonna climb up. Um, a lot of people wanna jump to the top and they wanna get this massive PR you know, where maybe they're on Oprah or something and, and they think that's it, or they want to jump midway up the ladder and, you know, begin doing paid advertising and, you know, things like yeah. that. And, and those things are all great, but we've seen a lot of people go broke doing that. We advocate starting with referrals, starting with a book as kind of the central, you know, marketing piece that you have for lead generation. And when you begin there, you can overcome the number one deficiency that we see in most businesses. And that's that you have a muddy message and you, you, you're not clear about the value that you offer and who you're offering it to. Mm -hmm. And referrals are a very forgiving medium, you know, to be able to be introduced to new people. Um, and uh, because, you know, they come with trust, people are kind of connecting you. And so, you have the ability to kind of overcome any deficiencies in the message and, and hone that message at that stage. And then once you've got that dialed in, you certainly can then move up the ladder and move to paid media and all those other great things. But uh, if you do it out of order, you can, you can cost yourself a lot of money in a hurry. Yeah. I love what you said about the, the pre-sell your prospect with whether it's a webinar or a video or something, because you're pretty much covering everything you need to cover before you're actually talking to them. Yeah, there, there are really three different sales that are made in every sale. 
We only pay attention to the one where we, you know, money changes hands, but the two before that are actually more important. And the first one is that the prospect has to buy that they've got a problem and it's a big enough problem they want to solve. Because we all have problems that we're perfectly willing to live with mm -hmm. uh, and not spend any money on. And then the second is that they've got to buy you as their person. Yeah. And if you can get them, and that's the point of the pre-sale presentation is to get them to make those first two purchases. They buy that they have a problem that they want to solve. And then they buy that you're the person to solve it. By the time you're across the table from them, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a sales genius yeah. to turn them into a client. You can just have a nice, easy, relaxed conversation. You know, and I want to circle back to, um, you were talking about that email messaging and not having that whole like four page email. And I've been seeing as a trend lately that I'm getting these long emails from people that want to sell me a digital product or their thing. And I'm thinking, really, do I want to read all that? So I'm almost, you know, my mind is back to you. It's like, Hey, do you want to be an author in 2020? Question mark. That's it. Like we're, we just opened our, our, our system for 2020. Do you want to be an author and nothing else? Like, you know, if it's to the people who already know us and we're sending it out to our list, I don't really have to send all that information. But I'm wondering is like, is that a trend? And I like what you said that it's, you're saying, no, don't do that. But I'm seeing that as a trend of all this text coming in these emails. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a place for that. It's, it's certainly worth testing. Um, but uh, one of the guys I follow um, is named Dean, Dean Jackson and, and Dean, came up with this concept of the nine word email, uh, you know, which is literally, you know, nine words and, you know, obviously yeah. it could be more or less, but it's essentially what you're saying is that really short, direct to the point to the people who are already in your world. Yeah. That might be all that they need. And mm -hmm. you're asking them a question that, that they can quickly and easily answer. You know, it's yeah. either no, in which case they're going to hit delete or yes. And they're going to reply. So you're going to quickly know, who the real prospects are. So yeah, I think that's a great approach. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So, and then do you have anything, tips on, okay, you've got all these people, you're, you're following up with them and you're not closing them. So do you have anything, how do you get them over the hump to, you're doing everything right that you said to do, but gosh, I'm just not closing them. What do you do? Well, it's probably two issues there. One is you're not having an effective sales conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, oftentimes what we find there is that, you know, the, the business owner is talking too much, frankly, um, in the sales conversation. They're not focused enough on getting the prospect to get clear on the future that they want mm -hmm. first, because that's the roadmap to sell anybody anything. I mean, the only way you're going to sell anyone anything is that you're going to create value for them at some point in the future. Yeah. And, um, and that they believe it and, and it's value that they desperately want. Um, but that has to come from them. That can't come from any magic words that you say. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing all this talking, you're not letting them get to where they need to be to do business with you. Right. So I think that that's usually the first place we would look for the culprit. Um, and then the other would be in the offer. Is the offer compelling? Is the message compelling? Um, and I mean, that's when you think about what marketing really is, it's, it's about identifying a group of people that have a problem and then coming up with the solution to that problem and a message that they can understand. Yeah. And if you're having good sales conversations and still not closing, it means there's a disconnect either between the people you're targeting, you know, or the message it's some, yeah. somewhere in there. And, um, you know, and so we'll, you know, we, we don't run across that very often with clients because we typically will help fix the messaging for them at the beginning. But those are, that's how you would diagnose that and, and figure out where the issue is. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for all of your great insights on all of this selling stuff. Tell people where they can go to get more information about your books and, and your website. Absolutely. We'd like, actually like to give them a copy of um, one of my books called The Exponential Network Strategy, which actually talks about how we use podcasts to, uh, to connect with prospects and, and with influencers. And if they go to uh, unstoppableceo.net slash elite expert insider, so unstoppableceo.net slash elite expert insider, uh, they can get a free copy of the book. And uh, we also have a complete guide that they can um, read. There's no opt-in for it on pre-selling prospects. 
And if they'd like to talk with me, I'd love to have a conversation with them. There's a place there where they can book a call too. Excellent. We'll put that link up at the bottom of the screen for those watching on YouTube. And for those who are listening, you can go to unstoppable.net. Is that right? Unstoppableceo.net. CEO.net. Great. Yep. Thanks so much, Steve, for coming by. We really got a lot out of that. We're going to go and get our uh, book and our worksheet that's at the bottom of his site. So make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to our podcast. And if you're looking to write a book and become a best-selling author, then go to EliteOnlinePublishing.com. That's Jen and I's website. We have launched over 85 books and made them all bestsellers for our clients. Not to mention we have 25 other 2,500 other books that we've done under our own imprint. So uh, give us a shout out and we'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time. Bye. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.